Hello everyone. Today we have an interesting topic that is password cracking. So let's start. We don't store the passwords, but we store their hashes. This is very important. Um, this uh, practice wasn't known uh, by many people. Actually, some people still don't know it, but uh, it is not a good idea to store passwords as they are, because if the system leaks, for instance, if you are uh, keeping your passwords in a database, if the database leaks, then all of the passwords leak. So this happened many times in the history. A lot of websites actually uh, had to close because of this, because their databases leaked. And, uh, a lot of uh, username and passwords also leaked. Uh, this is also bad because a lot of people also use the same password for many different uh, accounts, let's say. So uh, this caused a disaster. So we always suggest people to use different passwords for different uh, applications, different web pages. But for the people who are keeping the passwords, we also recommend them to not keep uh, store them as they are. So how can you check if a website uh, stores your password as it is? Easy way to do is to uh, click that, click the I forgot my password button. And if they send your password back to you, this means that they store your password as it is, which is a very bad idea. But if they send you a link to create a, a link to create a new password, this means that they also don't know what your password is. So this is why you have to follow the link and create a new password. So this means that they are not storing your password as it is. So uh, and this doesn't only apply to web pages. Uh, but also, for instance, your password for an, any uh, software on your computer or your login password for Windows or Linux, it, it doesn't matter. They has to be uh, stored in a hashed version, not the passwords themselves. So uh, the reason is obvious, leakage of the database or leakage of the system, if somebody captures your device and so on, this would mean that uh, they could also capture your password. So this is why we have to uh, store the hash instead of the uh, password, because during the hash functions, we also already discussed this. Uh, hash functions, actually strong cryptographic hash functions are pre-image resistant. This means that when they know the hash, it is not easy to find the uh, original uh, input that gives this output. So first thing is actually not to keep the hashes but also use a hash function that is secure so uh, during our uh, lectures uh, or trainings i still hear people using md5 for instance for uh, for password storing this is not a good idea and uh, you should avoid that so uh, even if you keep the hash of a password then uh, how can we crack this password? So what are the attacks? Uh, two generic attacks, dictionary and exhaustive search attacks that, that I'm going to talk today. So let's start with a dictionary attack. I always imagined that it would be something like this, uh, but unfortunately not, but I wish I could do that. But a dictionary attack is actually as follows. Pre-compute the hashes of common words on a dictionary, their combination with numbers, symbols, etc. So for instance, if you think that the people, uh, the passwords that you are trying to crack are combination of, uh, are written in some language and with some uh, numbers attached to it or some special characters, then for instance, if it is English, just take an English uh, dictionary which should be freely available on the internet. Take all of the words and compute their hashes. Combine them, also compute their hashes. Add some numbers to beginning or at the end of these words and take their hashes. So you have a gigabytes of hashed value. But this is pre-computation. Currently, you don't have anything to attack it. So you are actually uh, designing your dictionary first. So this means that you have a lot of kind of a random input, which are actually not random, but combination of words with numbers and special characters, and you have the hashes. Then 
sort this ta table uh, but using the hashed values so with the binary search algorithm this is uh, really fast it doesn't matter how many gigabytes you have uh, in the table you can easily sort it uh, uh, actually there are uh, sorting algorithms uh, which are uh, n log n and when you need to search you will use binary search algorithm but for the sort algorithm uh, they are really fast algorithms uh, even uh, sorting like 32 gigabytes is like uh, takes less than 10 minutes in a regular CPU so we created our dictionary now what we do is we obtain the uh, hash of a password so uh, you might think that this is a hacking process but this can be also a legitimate process for instance you forgot your password but you know the hash of it so you want to you cannot remember it so you can perform this kind of an attack to capture your password so the attacker can capture the passwords if their hash values are already in the table. So assume that you have a database consisting of a lot of hashes. Uh, you can also sort them. And now you have a, your initial dictionary, which you created, which are gigabytes of uh, data. Then you capture uh, uh, hashes of passwords from a database, let's say. Then you compare them. So if there are any matches, since you already know the input when you, because you created the dictionary yourself, this way you can uh, obtain the password itself. So this is actually a, consists of three phases. First, you um, create your dictionary. This is actually the time consuming part. Here you can use GPUs. So you take the hash of a lot of values and store them and uh, of course, you can store them in a hard drive, but <clears throat> if you want to do it really fast, you want to do it on the RAM. So if you have, for instance, 64 gigabytes of RAM, you can create a dictionary of first around 60 gigabytes, leave some gigabytes to the operating system. Then uh, when you capture, uh, you sort them. The second phase is sorting them. Again, in the memory, this is really fast. But if you keep, uh, bigger tables and use hard drive then reading and writing to the hard drive would cause some kind of a bottleneck but it is still possible because you are going to do this only once so you can for instance uh, run your gpus for weeks or months to create such a dictionary then you can sort them which would this time take some time because if you don't do it on the ram it wouldn't be that fast but anyway once you do it this is the pre-computation so you do it before actually ca capturing anything but once you capture the database or hashes of any passwords now since you have the dictionary use your dictionary and check if you know the initial password so this way uh, you can uh, capture a lot of passwords but uh, how do we overcome this uh, the solution is very easy uh, this way we can uh, be resistant against uh, dictionary attacks. So assume that you, you are running a system and people are generating accounts and they are choosing passwords. So instead of storing the, their password directly or the hashes of their password directly, generate a random value, we call it salt. So instead of taking the hash of the password, just concatenate this random value. Generally it is like 32 bits value, but the Larger is better actually. You can take longer salts, which will be harder for the attacker to generate dictionaries, but it doesn't matter much. It should be at least 32 bits. So create a random 32 bit, concatenate it to the user's password, and then take the hash of it and store it in the database. But you also need to uh, store the salt value in the database too. So when the database leaks, the salt value is not a secret. But the good thing is that uh, the dictionary of the attacker won't work in this scenario because uh, even if the user cho has chosen a password from an English dictionary, since you are adding a random value to the end of it, it wouldn't be in the dictionary of the any attacker. So this is the idea behind adding a soul. So this way 
you would be almost perfectly secure against dictionary attacks because attacker has to generate tables for every salt value. Uh, for instance, if you keep salts really short, for instance, one byte, let's say eight bits. So this means that uh, a password can be concatenated to the uh, two to the eight different values, which is uh, 256. So this makes the attackers work only 256 times harder. So instead of generating such a dictionary, the attacker has to uh, concatenate every salt value at the end of these passwords and generate a, a dictionary for all of the salt values, which means that the attacker has to generate 256 different dictionaries to perform the attack. But uh, this is not that hard, for instance, if the dictionary of the attacker is one gigabyte, this means that now the attacker needs 256 gigabytes, which is uh, almost every hard drive now has more than that amount of uh, storage. So for this reason, we recommend uh, generating salt values at least 32 bits. So this makes the, this forces the attacker to, to generate two to the third uh, to two different dictionaries, which is not practical at all. Nobody would have that much uh, storage and uh, that amount of computational power to generate that many uh, dictionaries. Of course, this is just the idea. In order to further secure, we, we will give more ideas as countermeasures for exhaustive search. So next attack type is exhaustive search. 